Hey everybody, I am doing a update on my pregnancy and I am 31 weeks along, which is pretty far <laughs> when you are pregnant with twins. Um, so just wanted to kind of fill everyone in on what's been going on since my last update. Um, so unfortunately, I have to figure out what is going on with my cameras because <laughs> or the memory cards, I don't know what exactly is the problem, but I film update videos and I think they're just too long and then the camera or the memory card doesn't transfer the video to my computer, there's always an error. So I think I have to cut them every couple minutes, I need to cut and like restart the video. So hopefully there even was a previous update to this one <laughs> that I can post. But anyways, I recorded them, it's just I don't know if I can post them or not, so. Um, but uh, if you didn't see the previous update, um, that was when we found out that there was uh, this thing in my placenta called a placental chorioangioma. If I remember correctly, that's what it's called. Uh, and it's pretty rare, it happens in like 1% of pregnancies or something like that. Um, or 1% of twin pregnancies, some crazy rare statistic. Um, and what was described to me was that it's basically like a tumor, a non-cancerous tumor that has its own blood supply, so, and it can grow, and then if it grows bigger than, I think, five centimeters, then it can get dangerous for the babies and tends to uh, take uh, from their blood supply. So they're already at risk because they're identical for twin to twin transfusion syndrome. And sorry if you already heard this in another video, but I just, if you didn't watch that one or if I never got to post it, I'm telling you now. So they're already at risk for twin to twin transfusion syndrome, which can happen because they share a placenta. So at any point, uh, one twin can start taking the blood supply and the other twin doesn't get as much of the nutrients and the supply it needs. Uh, and that would cause growth restriction in the other twin and it could even possibly affect both of them negatively where they could die or, you know, uh, be born stillborn or even develop heart failure shortly after birth. So that's kind of always in the back of my mind and scares me. But now I have this other thing and this thing is also, there's a risk that it'll take blood supply away from the babies. So we have to monitor that every two weeks as well. It was between two and three centimeters and it hasn't grown since then, which is really good. That's what we hope for. And so hopefully it doesn't cause complications for the babies. Um, but the doctor did tell me to prepare for a birth between 34 and 37 weeks due to this thing in my placenta. So we're at 31 weeks now. Um, and up until about a week and a half ago, I thought I was doing pretty darn good. Um, my back pain went away. I was having this weird twinging back pain at my tailbone and that went away. Time out, time out, sorry. I'm out of breath because <laughs> I'm like leaning forward and crunching the twins. And <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, I thought I was doing pretty good. The back pain went away and I thought I was, you know, moving around pretty darn good. Um, and I feel like about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, I was definitely at the size that I was when I delivered my first daughter, Alina. And so I looked it up and sure enough, um, it said at about 30 weeks pregnant with twins, a mom's belly or uterus or whatever your size is typically about the same as a full term 40 week pregnant singleton pregnancy woman or however you want to phrase that. So I was correct. I was about the size I was um, when I delivered Alina. So if you can imagine, then that means that the goal is to get to basically the size of seven weeks past a regular person's full-term 40-week size. And that's pretty crazy if you think about it. If I could think back to when I was pregnant with Alina, I mean, I didn't know if I could make it another few days, and I'm sure other people who've been pregnant and made it to their due date, like it, like you're ready to go. <laughs> so imagine going, you're hoping to go seven weeks longer than that to get to um, give birth. It's just, it's a lot on the body and my, the last two weeks have been kind of hitting me hard in ways I didn't expect. So 
that's what I'm going to talk about really quickly. Um, obviously size. When I go up the stairs, my stomach is now, my thighs kind of crunch my stomach. <laughs> I don't know if our stairs here at the new house are steeper or what. <laughs> a couple days ago, I stopped being able to just get up, you know, from a sitting position on the floor. I was pretty good at being able to still just stand up pretty easily holding on to something and now my stomach gets in the way where my thighs actually squished my stomach one night so I realized okay I can't do that anymore you know you're never really supposed to sleep on your back if you can avoid it um, but it's become now at the point that it, I like really feel it if I lay on my back I'm like something is squishing my chest like an elephant is sitting on my chest I need to get off my back um, and before that it was just slightly uncomfortable, but now I know I need to get off my back. Uh, and then something new that developed is my shoulder impingement. And I looked it up and it can happen during pregnancy. You know, your joints are getting looser and also you're sleeping on your left side all the time. And so, um, yeah, it just, just happens sometimes. So that's what I'm dealing with. But along with that, what's even worse is like the last mm, three days maybe um i developed these really painful probably goes along with the shoulder impingement because it happened a couple days after i noticed that feeling i got like a few trigger points along my rhomboid muscle right along there i've got a few points that are just they are so killer and i i, I always have knots and sometimes it gets to the point where like I have to, something needs to put pressure on it right now because it's pinching something is what it feels like. Well, it feels like that pinching, unbearable pain like all the time. And so I'm having to massage it on things and rub against the wall and ask Micah to massage it. And just when I lay down on something, I try to put a tennis ball or I'm just constantly aware of it and it's driving me nuts. And so... Um, I'm lucky that I don't suffer too much from, you know, the acid reflux or constipation or the other things that are common in especially third trimester. Uh, I have those things a little, but not, you know, to the point that it's affecting my life. But this shoulder situation is just taking over and it's so sore. So yeah, that's kind of the major thing that's been going on. Oh, I basically don't wear much <laughs> because I'm humongous so this is like my daily uniform is some sort of uh oh let's get a little bump shot shall we <laughs> this is me at 31 weeks let me take this off pull this so you guys can see all the way there you go 31 weeks pregnant with my twin girls so, but this is basically my uniform. It's like a nightgown of some sort. Mama needs a nap. True story, every day. <laughs> I wish I could have one. Um, but Alina's nap time is the only time to get things done. So some kind of nightgown and then a robe. And both of these are from Pink Blush. They are my favorite. But yeah, this is basically what I wear most every day. Uh, also bras with underwire or like even no underwire but then they have tight support bands. I hate, hate anything, any pressure around my stomach and now even during pregnancy around my diaphragm, hate it. And so I wasn't actually even wearing bras most of the time and then I just was like, you know, I gotta do, I gotta wear something, I don't want, you know, the when you're pregnant, your breasts grow, and just, I wanted some sort of support, but I didn't want too much, because then I feel like I can't breathe. It almost gives me anxiety. But um, if you're like me, and you hate underwire, or you know, tight, thick bands around you um, during pregnancy, I found a super cute bralette from Ula Lari, uh, and I posted that on my social media recently too, so if you look back, um, you'll see that. And it's a nursing bralette, um, but what I like is that the because it's a bralette, it's not so supportive that it's 
constricting, <laughs> but it's just enough to like hold the girls up and um, the band is really skinny and it almost just like lifts my boobs without being tight on my diaphragm. So it's mostly just about the lift, which is what I want during pregnancy. And then for afterwards, you know, there's the nursing clips. So that's awesome because buying bras, I already bought a few and then I grew out of them within two weeks. I was so mad. <laughs> I bought a few during pregnancy and just, it's so unpredictable what your boobs are gonna do during your pregnancy. So, um, and they're lacy and they're so cute. I plan to buy a few more, um, but yeah. They're awesome, so check those out. Uh, I'm also on the hunt for a good pumping bra, so we'll be looking into that. Um, you know, it's just nice to not feel super frumpy when you have to wear these maternity and nursing garments. So if we can find pretty ones, I feel like that would help a lot. Um, yeah, I guess next we'll talk about the babies. <laughs> so baby A is a little bit lower and on my left side, and baby B is up higher and on my right. And baby B has been the bigger one, but um, at two appointments ago, so four weeks ago, uh, baby B was about a 10% difference in growth from baby A. And they said that's okay, that they want to, you know, watch it. And if it gets close to a 15% difference between them, then that would be more concerning. So, but then at the last appointment, baby A actually grew to be a little bigger than baby B. So, Doctor said it looks like baby A just had a growth spurt and baby B hasn't gone through hers yet. So um, I think the next appointment will give us more information on that. Um, but they were both around 3.2, 3.4, somewhere around their pounds. So I'm carrying like seven pounds of baby and the rest is just cookies and, <laughs> and pastries. And I've been eating really bad, it's terrible. Um, but yeah, I, I have no excuse. I've just been eating terrible. Uh, I try to get in some protein and Mike has been trying to make smoothies for us. But I mean, cookies are just, cookies and I've developed this new craving for root beer, which was not ever, I mean, I like root beer, but it's like I want it all the time now. And so I know soda is so terrible for you, but I'm trying, trying to limit. But if anyone offers to pick us, up food or Mike is coming home and offers like I can't turn it down so I told Mike like stop asking me <laughs> if I want anything because I'm always gonna say I want something from somewhere that has root beer <laughs> so anyways so I guess to sum it all up the main things in this update have just been um, my size I'm finally being restricted <laughs> and can't get up off the ground my shoulder impingement just killing me. I need to find someone that can do a really good prenatal massage, like ASAP. Like, it's okay right now because Michael massaged me right before this video, but it is, it's been driving me nuts. I was in tears last night. Sometimes it's not even so much that the pain is unbearable in the moment, it's that it lasts for so long and you're just like, when is it gonna go away? And so, um, yeah, that's just what it is right now. It's just constant and I don't get much relief from it. And so that's kind of what's the, what the difficult part is about it. Um, babies are doing good. Uh, oh, and my hands. My hands are swelling. They didn't really swell with Alina very much. And I don't have, um, you know, preeclampsia or anything yet. Uh, my blood pressure has been okay. Um, but at nighttime, I notice my fingers, I can feel them starting to get tight. I can't keep my, I don't want to put my ring on. I can get it on, but it's really hard to get off, so I don't want them to get stuck. So I've stopped wearing those. Um, and so yeah, I haven't noticed my feet swelling but this time, but definitely my fingers, my little chubby sausages. But that's pretty much it for this update. Uh, again, I'm 31 weeks today. Um, and I think coming up next is we need to finish um, getting this house unpacked. I read in my app that um, if you're expecting twins, you could go into labor at any point from now. So surely your hospital bag is packed. And I was like, nope. <laughs> so we need to start preparing our game plan. Um, I don't know why I thought, 
I mean, I, I knew that I could go into labor when Micah's at work. It's probably more likely than not. But I think because I Micah was home with me when I went into labor with Alina, and it was very calm, and, like, we actually, my water had burst in the morning a little bit. Like, I leaked. I was like, did I pee? I don't know what that was. And we just went about our day, and in the afternoon, I was like, maybe I should get checked. So we had the hospital bag in the car. We called the hospital, asked what we should do. They said, oh, just come on in. We'll check and see if it was your water. And so we went in, and as soon as the doctor opened the door to come into the exam room, my water, like, completely broke, bursted. <laughs> and the doctor was like, well, guess we know your water broke. So um, we were already at the hospital, so... That solved that problem. Now I have a toddler. I'm here by myself. So if it, my water breaks or I go into labor and Micah is not here, I'm just thinking they're smaller. What if they come faster? Because it's my second, you know, delivery. Like, I don't know. If anyone has any tips, like we don't have family here. So it's just going to have to be um, like friends and whatnot. But I was thinking, geez, I'm going to be all by myself with Alina. What if the contractions like come on really fast and close together and like she still needs my attention and so yeah we gotta figure that whole plan out and finish unpacking the house which is gonna be a feat in and of itself so that's what's coming up for us <laughs> um and i will have an appointment in about a week or so so keep you guys posted <laughs> i'll do one more bump shot before I go. I know a lot of people will skip to the end of these videos just to see how big people are. <laughs> so I'll do one more here at the end. Thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. Like I said, we have some giveaways coming up. I want to do um, like a what's in my hospital bag and uh, what we're registered for. We have some really good recommendations for people from, you know, what we used with Alina that we know for sure we want with the babies. And so we'll do a video on that. Um, if there's anything you guys want to see, comment below. And yeah, just thanks thanks for watching and thanks for being patient with these videos. Like I said, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my camera and my memory cards. So hopefully if we figure it out and you guys get to see more of these updates that I'm filming because I put on makeup. <laughs> I, you know, have Micah take care of Alina so I can film them and then I can't post them because there's something wrong. It's like maddening. <laughs> so hopefully you guys get to see this one. Uh, I tried to stop it a few times so hopefully the files aren't too big. But thanks again. I'll see you guys in my next video and let me do my bump shot real quick.